Okay, today we are going to be casting some lights for a Model T go-kart and basically what our problem has been is that we've been short shooting and it hasn't been filling in and I've been doing some research and part of it is that I've got this this lens part is way too thin and as you can see I also have some blowouts on the back side but I think that's contributed to the fact by um, it should have filled because that's that's near this bar near the pouring area so uh, I've done a few things uh, number one I made the core a little shallower uh, in other words not so deep so my lens will come out decent um, I have a special way that I make my patterns um, basically this particular pattern is made by mixing sand with some polyurethane um, this particular one here is using the um, the process of mixing it with uh, silicon uh, silicate whatever that stuff is sodium silicate that's what these two parts are made out of so basically you treat this with CO2 and that's how this one was actually made so I have two in reserve here that you can see that the uh, pattern is a little bit finer and that tends to translate into a better finish so uh, we're going to mold one to start to see how that comes out and if it comes out good we'll do the second part we've already done a light bar that came out pretty good uh, we'll come over here and take a look at it the light bar we did last this earlier this week but here it is uh, basically came out really nice um, basically this would bolt on to a Model T go kart, I got to drill holes in it, but it basically would replace the one that's right here on the go kart. It would be a direct replacement, and it'd be stronger. The one on the Model T go kart is made out of steel. This one's made out of uh, high high strength aluminum that's used in uh, cylinder heads on go karts and. As an aside, this is our Model T wheel, our first cast, just to see how it will come out. And uh, we're working on getting, well, no one's really ordered any yet, so when they do, then we'll go ahead and get that going. We have patterns and everything ready to go, so we fit right on the go-kart. So Let's get to the task at hand here and get these lights molded. Okay, to start with one of these molds, uh, I have pre-made molds. These are for regular uh, molding operations so but it's a little, little different when you're doing these so what I do is I cap off the holes for the um, you can just keep it there you can stop moving so then I just cap off the holes the filling the filling holes with tape and the reason for that is it makes it easier to um, well it makes everything stay aligned that's number one thing because these uh, patterns, I 3D printed this pattern stuff and then I made an inverse mold. Probably give you a zoom in on that. So basically what we'll do here is we're going to fill this with gravel, gravelly stuff, and then we're going to put our risers on the side. So we'll put this on here like this. Get my tape out of here so I don't ruin it. And... Uh, I guess we can use this. So we'll fill up the sides. These off to the side here. Really pretty easy. I just use some cruddy stuff underneath. You don't really need good stuff under here. That's pretty bad stuff. It's pretty bad, yeah. It's not even ground. No, it's not anything decent at all. Okay. Is that wood? No, it's sand. It's not the greatest. This is sand that's found together with... Uh, I was bond. talking about this. Oh, yeah, that's wood. <laughs> Are you sure you yes, want that in there? Yes, that's wood. Okay. So, you can't even really see anything. We'll have to move this in here, but... Basically, I have it totally covered, so now we have to figure out where we're going to put our risers. Actually, they can see this. 
Okay, so we're going to put our risers. We know that they're on either side of that. So I have some in my box here. And I basically use exhaust pipe. So I'll just puncture this down in there like this. And because I want this area around here to be better, you know, I don't want it to be, um, I don't know how to say it. I want it to be firmer, and this sand, obviously, you can see is not firm. So what I can do is use put some petrol bond in this area because it holds together. I know, I know it sounds like a waste of petrol bond. I, I don't like doing it either, but it makes it fast. Okay, so... Petrobond. After a while, your Petrobond's going to get nasty anyway. So I tend to separate my Petrobonds into different grades. So the stuff I've been using for quite some time, I kind of separate from the other stuff. Now at the bottom of my riser, I put a little bit a petro bond and I'm going to tap that down and I basically have a piece of PVC pipe that I filled full of um, oh what did I fill it full of uh, plaster because I use it for my cup riser that I made the other day I'll show you that Plaster riser, where'd that thing go? Oh, right here. This was a plastic, it's out of a simple cup, and I pretty much just uh, put a pipe in there, and when it was still a little wet, I pulled it. These work really great for filling. Probably not going to use that for this project, but the after effect with this pipe is working good. Okay, so we're going to fill this in. Oh. The nice thing about this process is you don't have to be hyper, hyper uh, sensitive about how you're doing it because uh, you can use a vacuum to suck up some of the stuff. And it's, it's a little quicker than doing the pattern the way you do a regular pattern. Okay, so we're going to get a, a tamper. The tamper board, and we just do the conventional tap down. So, when we're separating this later, I pretty much spread it out on the floor. And then, I you can take a, a grate if you want, and you can separate your Petra Bond out again, a screed. So, just keep tamping. We want it up to this level for some head pressure on this thing. Uh, I think I've got a little bit too much in there, in that hole. So what I'm going to do is get another pipe. The pipe, a few pipes are over here. Get some pipes, well, that's a bigger one. Yeah, that's like exhaust pipes. Okay, I found another pipe that we can put on top here like this. It's just to keep the sand out. I could possibly tape it together. All we're trying to do is keep the sand out of that spot. Okay, so I'm going to tape the two together on that out. Um, can you give me that tape gun over there? Thank 
you. All right, so we're gonna tape these together. We're just making a riser for this. I've done this several times. So we'll tap that down in there. It got a little tall. This pipe's a little big. Got several kinds of sticks and stuff I use for tamping stuff down. All right, here we go. So now we can fill up the rest. Hey. Hey. This part is like a conventional mold. You just pretty much fill it up. Do we have enough battery on the uh, camera? We have 37 minutes left. Okay. So we're going to keep spreading it around. The key here is that we're going to fill up on these two. Um, we want them to fill together if we can, I think. Last time I filled it up, I filled it up from one side and it made a wave connection. We'll see. I think it's going to work better because I made the, uh, the lens bigger so it has more ability to flow through whereas before it didn't. Okay, we're almost there. I, li I like to fill it up to the top. I like to do. As you can see, I have some cruddy petrol uh, petrol bond here. This is just for these fast molds that I do. And the reason why I like the petrol bond is because it packs. So, on the other side, okay. Okay. I'm going to do something a little different here. Um, what I'm going to do is join the two with a trough channel. Yes, material's getting in the bottom of those troughs. It doesn't bother me. Remember, we have those taped off. That's what's key here. So whatever fell in there, we're going to pack in. Okay, so then what we're going to do as well is we're going to make a trough that joins the two. So when they fill, you will have like a river or a lake that joins the two, okay? And then we'll, we'll pull this out. So we twist, and because the bottom has been packed full, we have to pound it out as we lift. Okay, so we're gonna pack this in. We're going to look for our hole down there where it's supposed to fill. 
I can feel it. So we'll tap down whatever's left here. I'm going to do the same on this end. This one's probably not going to be as pretty. Right. Again, tapping down. Feeling for the hole. Okay. The nice thing about having a big cavity like this is it retains a lot of heat. Okay, the next step, you're probably going to be like, what are you doing? We are, and I can see the entrance. We're going to preheat everything. So what I like to do is clean the table off so we don't have a huge mess. So I'll do that right now. Hey, Ethan, can you give me the brush over there? Hey, do you have your sword? Are we going to make one today? Why not? Oh, it didn't hit it. Okay, so... Turning the table off. Alright. Now the problem is, it will spill. At the level we have, it will spill. So I've had some metal plates I put out. In case we have a, a spill, and we should put it on the ground too, because it will it spills over and hits the ground. That's that's not a good thing. Oh, okay, it's heavy. Okay. One, two, five. It's heavy. Okay, it'll be fine. All right. So what has happened in the past is it's dumped on the ground. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of cardboard down, I mean a piece of uh, plywood down to catch it. It'll just burn, up, burn it a little bit. But it won't be like the, what I've had in the past where it explodes and pops. You don't want that. Okay, so what we want to do now, uh, we're just doing one lens at a time right now. I've set them up for two, but not, to, not today. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I basically I'm going to burn that tape. Boy, I'm on start up. Find your sword. Okay, looks like we don't don't see my gate here. <laughs> it's not a big deal. This is just a big reservoir here. I'm trying to for filling. Just works in here if it's um. Okay, we gotta go down farther. Okay, so uh, what I can do is dig some of the material out. You wanna do that one? 
Both actually What's that? Both are good. Well, I think we're going to do one at a time. Well, we'll try to do both with one for three. Okay, there's the hole right there. So what I'm using is a pipe to uh, basically excavate the material out. It just goes inside the pipe, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now we're going to blow some uh, gas in there and fire it. Okay. And you can tell if something's happening if smoke comes out the other side. I don't know what's wrong with my torch, but it's not been working great that lately. Maybe somebody has some comments on how to get this thing to work better. Uh, I just think it's old. Okay. So what I'm doing here is kind of preempting. I'm heating up the inside of the mold a little bit. I send some heat through it. Okay, right now we should probably start heating up the... the uh, actual furnace. So when we come back, we'll have things going differently. All right. Okay, here we go. Stay okay. back. Don't smell any of this stuff. Do you have enough? No, I don't. I, I'm out. Uh. Okay, well, we got plenty of stuff. We can start another bath. Can you give me a hammer so we can take this piece? Any hammers out here? Yeah. You can shut the camera off, huh? Which one does that? This one? All right, here we go.
down. One more to go. So we can remelt this. <laughs> 